I'm over here tonight uh, to talk a little bit uh, about our half penny sales tax, the renewal, and to kind of have a conversation and any questions that you might have, I'll try to try to answer them for you. Uh, a couple things that's real important on this is wherever I go, people ask me, what is the role that, that, that I play or that you play? In other words, what role can you play in this? And a lot of times when we get involved in uh, whether it's a, a school-related uh, issue or a school-related fundraiser or something that's just special for you at the school, I think sometimes uh, we underestimate the value and the importance that a group like this can have with a referendum like this. I just want you for a minute to think about a few things that you do. Number one, a lot of you go to church. You're involved in your church. If you think about all the people you come in contact with your church group. Some of you are in uh, Leon County Teachers Association. Uh, think about all your friends that are teachers or that are educators. If you get involved with that group related, talking to them about the half penny. Some of you have belong to civic groups, clubs. All those individuals, if you count up how many of you can touch so many people, you know, before you know it, you're with thousands of people and you made a difference. I want to tell you what research is showing us right here today, and, and it's certainly true in Tallahassee, Florida. The most important people as far as respect goes in education today is not the superintendent of schools. You know, I wished it was, but that, that's not what people tell you when, you when you poll people or you talk to them. The most important people that is respected that people listen to are teachers. They're the most powerful group you can have. And as a teacher, because we have a lot of teachers that are here tonight that I recognize uh, that, that do an unbelievable job, and parents, as teachers, the role that you can play is incredible. So don't ever underestimate how many people listen to you and look up to you, not just students, but community people. So if this is something that you believe in, that you've seen since 2002, what has happened in our school system, what's currently happening in Fairview now, with technology, what's going to be happening in, in Oak Ridge and what has happened, then please get out and let people know how you feel. That's the most important thing you can do. I've been walking neighborhoods. I've been at uh, civic organizations, civic groups. I've been talking to everybody that I can about what our school system would look like today if we would not have passed this back in 2002. It would not look like it does today. So it's something that's very important because a lot of times the things that we take for granted are sometimes the things in life that are closest to us. They're the things we just, every day we're there, we have them with us, so we think it's always going to be there. Well, the half penny's going away unless it's renewed. Now, this is not an easy time to try to pass referendums. And a couple of things that we need to remember about this when we're talking about it, this is not a new tax. This is just the continuation of what we have. So we're not asking to put something new. We just want to continue what we have for 15 years. 30 to 33 percent of this is paid for by people that visit our community. People that come in here to the Florida Indian football game, the Florida State uh, football games, people that come down on vacation and travel through here. So think about that, almost 30 percent, 33 percent by people outside of our community. What can the dollars be used for? Number one, technology in your schools. If you look around and want to look around our technology compared to a lot of districts, you'll feel real good about what we have so far, but we still got miles to go. And you know with technology, teachers, things change so quickly, so what was new back in 2002 is not new today. And there's new things that our students need. So it can be used for technology, it can be used for renovations, it can be used for roofs, you know, air conditioning, uh, equipment, anything involved with the capital side of the school system. So that's why it's so important that we continue this and keep this going. So I encourage all of you today as parents, as teachers, to please get involved in this. We brought over brochures that would show exactly what each uh, school is going to get. Uh, the information out there that we have during elections, there's so much going on, there's so many ballots uh, going on that we got to make sure that people understand that we're last on the ballot, 
but first in our hearts. So make sure you, you stay with the ballot as you're voting because if you don't, what's going to happen? A lot of people look at that and sometimes they want to vote for the president and, and it, or whoever, don't want to get anybody fired up, but, uh, or who they're going to vote for. Then after they get through with that, they say, okay, I'm finished, all right? We got to get them to go all the way down the ballot and vote for this because it is, it is that important. Uh, if you look back on the process that's involved in this, I think this can be very powerful. The chamber put together a group of individuals from the community. Uh, this was not driven by the school system. This was driven by the Chamber of Commerce. In most uh, places, the chamber is probably the last group you can get to go along with uh, a, a sales tax or a tax initiative in a lot of areas. Our chamber gets it. We've got a great chamber here in Tallahassee, and they understand that the role the school system plays as far as in the business community. When a new company is coming into Tallahassee, the first person they want to see is the superintendent of schools. And the reason why is they want to talk about what type of schools do you have? You know, how many great schools do you have? What are opportunities for my workforce? You know, where are the schools located? You know, what type of success have those individual schools had? So the chamber understands that the key to economic development is making sure that we have a strong school system. Again, the most important individuals in the school system are our teachers. Now this technology doesn't replace great teaching, but it assists the teachers in the classroom and it helps the students. So it's part of the whole process to making us a high performing district. Recently we were rated by DOE as high performing. That's the first time we've been rated high performing ever. We're very proud of that. We've got a great school district. You know, don't let anybody tell you different. You know, don't let anybody tell you anything about our teachers. Our teachers are the best. They've been called upon to do more over the past three years than they ever had in their lives. And, and it's not getting easier. It's probably even going to get worse. Uh, but they always get the job done. And we should be proud of this system. And our parents, you know, what we hear from them, they love our schools. They love their teachers. They love their individual schools. So what we got to make sure and let them know that they're a very important part of passing this half-penny referendum. Uh, once it is passed, what we've tried to do, which I think is very, very powerful, when you drive by schools, you're going to see uh, what is in the plan at this time. That doesn't include every dollar that's available, but it includes most of the dollars that have been budgeted that we're sure that we would collect. So what those signs say, you're going to get. And just like last time, that was one of the things that made this very powerful, is we did what we said we were going to do. If it was on the sign and the schools had it, we did it. There were some that were, were even done ahead of time that were done quicker than what we even anticipated because we were able to go out and bond money on the basis of passing it to accelerate and to get these things in action as quick as we possibly can. Now when you look around and you talk to people and you talk to students, what do students love? Students love technology. You cannot, they're so much better at it than I am. You know, I've got a new phone, I'm working on it and trying to get there, but the students are so good when it comes to technology. I want to make sure as the superintendent of schools in Leon County that our technology matches the great teaching that we have. If we can get to that point that we can elevate our technology at the same level that our teaching is, then there is no doubt we'll continue to have one of the best school districts in the state of Florida. And that's my goal as superintendent. And that's why I'm working hard to pass this. Now, I'll tell you, uh, I'm, you know, it's not political for me because I don't talk politics in a school, but I'm up for election this time. And I'm on the ballot with this. And a lot of people say, oh, don't go on the ballot with it. I said, that doesn't bother me because this is a great story to tell. And I, wanted, I just mentioned that so everybody would think about that, that this is so important I felt like we couldn't wait for two years, wait to 2014. We couldn't wait to 2016. We had to do this now. And we all have to have the courage to lead during difficult times. We cannot make excuses and say, well, why not just wait? We can wait three years and maybe things will be a little better and there won't be as much talk out there about uh, things going on around the country. The economy will get better. And I, and I think the economy will get better. but." We can't afford to wait. 
it runs out in 2012, so we're back on the ballot with it. And, uh, and I'm proud of what we've done with it, and I'm excited about this vote. I think our parents are going to stand with us. I think they're going to send a strong message, and I think we're going to pass it. But I need your help. This is why I'm here. I need your help. I need you, again, to go out into all the groups that you're in, everything that you've got, and make sure that you spread the word about what you've seen happen with this and how important you think technology is for you in your classroom and at your school and how important it is to keep this revenue source going. Now think about one thing that will really help you. And I tell this story and a lot of times people go, whoa, explain it. Since 2007, our school district from the state has lost $111 million. That to me is, when I first ran for superintendent, if you'd have told me that was going to happen, I might have, wait, wait a minute. But it did. And it just kept going. The legislature just kept doing it. They kept doing it. And, and you know, 40 million, 20 million turns into 40, 40 to 80. Now we're at 111. And over half of that is capital dollars, too, that are used to, to replace the air conditioning systems, the roofs. You know, they took the 2.0 mills and they cut it back to 1.5 mills. You know, so that's revenue that we needed to, to operate uh, the school system, and it's gone. So if you think about that, one of the reasons that we have done so much, what I feel like have, have been a lot better off than other districts, is we had the half penny. We anticipated these things were on our plan to be done, and we had that. I can tell you stories that some of you have heard. We've got people from LCTA here. We Broward County, they lost a thousand teaching positions in one year. Can you imagine that? You know, that's not the path we went down in Leon County. You know, we didn't go down. Did we cut? 111, I can promise you. There's been lots of cuts. It's hurt. But that's why this is so important to us. And that's why we, we really need to do everything. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure it passes. A couple of things that, that we've done during this time, thanks to the great teaching, we've improved our graduation rates. They're up even during this, this, this difficult time. Something that's close to my heart, we protected our fine arts programs. Uh, in, in, in elementary, we still have art, music, and PE when other districts have just cut that throughout the state. I refuse to do that. You know, these are the programs that keep kids in school, uh, keep kids uh, wanting to get up every day. Uh, you just can't give kids seven periods of math and reading and think they're going to be successful. It, it gets old because they've had this since they've been a lot of the kids keep getting that every year and they keep putting them back in there and it's like they got to have something to release. They got to have something they love, something they fall in love with. And, and usually that's one of your fine arts classes. Magnet programs, we've kept them in place. You know, a lot of districts cut all their magnet programs. That's the first thing they did. Hey, let's just cut it. So I think we've evaluated what's important and we've kept that strong during these times. But part of the reasons we've been able to do this, even though it's two, two pots of money, is because of this half penny. Am I proud of this school district? I'm very proud of it. You know, I would put our district up against any district in the state of Florida. One thing we do in public education, we educate everybody. They walk in the door, we're glad to have them. We want them there. We're proud of the fact they want to be in our school system. We don't pick and choose, okay? We want everybody. And as superintendent, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what we've done uh, with kids that come in the door. There's been a lot of changes related to school choice and, and opportunities for individuals to come into that. Uh, that is a lot of that been driven by the federal government where kids can have the opportunity that if they're in a school and it has a certain grade, some of that is going away, which I think is good, which will help us protect some of the, uh, uh, our school zones, the integrity of our programs. So I think that would be real good. One of the things, I don't have this, maybe Paul's here with me. I want to introduce a few people. Scotty Crow, Assistant Superintendent. Paul Bird is with me, Assistant Superintendent. Uh, a couple things, Paul, on the QSCIB, QSCIB, I don't have the list what Fairview's getting from that. Do you have that with you? What, what are, what, and that's part of dollars that are coming to Fairview right now? 
Fairview got three million dollars for air conditioning and remodeling, and uh, nine hundred eighty-four thousand and six dollars for technology. I would accuse that. And with half penny added to it, what would you have the sign up for the half penny? Three point seven million dollars. Okay, so a total. So if you added all that together, we're around what five or six million dollars. And thanks to Mr. Richardson, we're replacing the floor, the gym floor, because he let me let me know about that. And and that's not even in this. So, but that's coming out of capital outlay. So that is something that we are going to do. And I appreciate it, Curtis Bennett. We had too many traveling calls. Uh, hey, when Curtis gets <laughs> Give Curtis a lot of credit. He's been a good friend of mine, and he's such an advocate for our kids. And he called me, and I said, I promise we'll get that done. And, and so, so there's needs. See, and this is a good example. That's a great example. Even though you identify needs in your five-year plan and in your survey plan, things come up. You know, things wear out that you didn't anticipate, and you got to have dollars to be able to, to replace them too. So that's why it's so important that we keep this going. I'm proud of your administrative teams here. Uh, I wanted to say that while I'm here. Oak Ridge, Fairview, you got a good team. Uh, your pre-IB here has done a great job. You've worked real hard. Uh, I'm trying to slow down the recruiting a little bit. No, I'm just kidding. You, hey, wait, <laughs> wait. I know you recruit. <laughs> we want you to recruit. <laughs> but you've done a, a, a really good job with that. And parents that come through these schools with Oak Ridge and, and Fairview, they have positive stories to tell. You know, they believe in it. And I think it all starts right here with, with the group that we have right here in front of us. But I want to say something special about your school board uh, while I'm here because all these tough times we've been through and what we've been through, we've been through together. But I could not have done it without a great school board. And this school board has really done everything they can to protect the classroom. And Maggie Lewis Butler is here with me. And let's give her a big hand for her leadership. <laughs> Maggie, would you like to say something to the group? You know, yes. I know you always like to say hello. Yeah, uh, good, evening. good evening. Yeah, it's a joy to be here, and along with the superintendent, especially about the half cent sales tax. When we took, went out in 2002, I got a chance to ride the school bus with the uh, Chamber of Commerce to Rickles High School, and that's when I started looking at the dilapidation of our schools. They were in critical condition. And because of the half a cent sales tax, we upgraded Rickles High School, Nims Middle School, and many, many of our schools. Uh, Mr. Bird went out, just like he did now, put those big signs up to show where the money was going to go at each school. And, and the environment is conducive for learning if it's enhanced. Students like a nice environment. And we want to keep the half a cent sales tax going, continuing in order to continue to upgrade. You know, at my house, uh, I was telling my husband, we have um, these machines, you know, tapes and DVDs, and they become obsolete. I couldn't believe it. I said, but you just bought that. You mean we got to buy another one? And this is like the superintendent said about technology. It go, it's outdated so quickly. And this is happening in our schools. That's why we need to have a sense sales tax. Thank you. Mr. Bird has headed up the Half Penny Initiative for me. Uh, he's done a great job. Paul, anything else that you'd like to add to what we've said? Well, I'll be here. I'll stay here for questions if you want to know the uh, specifics about what we've done over the past 10 years. Uh, one of the things we've done a very good job on is we've kept detailed records to the penny. For 24 years, I have that history available here. Uh, just understand that everything the superintendent has said is right on. You've got to know that uh, our school district would not be where it's at without this half penny, the last half penny. And it's even more critical this time than it was last time. Because of, of the funding cuts and the economy, uh, it's more critical this time than it was last time. And it was very critical last time. Okay. Uh, we got about eight more minutes to go, so I'm just going to kind of open it up if you have any questions on anything else related to uh, um, the Half Penny or to Fairview or to Oak Ridge. Any questions at all? No questions? Oh, right here. Yes, ma'am. I assume before we get our sign. I assume before they get their sign. I assume before Oak Ridge gets their sign. 
You talk about the school sign? The public yes. school? A new sign? Yes, a new sign. I have to talk to this baby. <laughs> Soon, right? Soon. There we go. Soon. Hopefully this week. Top of the list. That's right. Good. Great question. Okay. Yes, sir. You read um, the figures that Mr. Bird did as far as uh, how much is earmarked for Fairview. What, how does that compare to the rest of the schools or, you know, what percentage of the pie is that? I'll let Mr. Bird answer that because the, and, and if you, add, and what we're doing on this, we're adding the half penny along with a pot of dollars that we gave this year that we're putting in now too, but they're listed separately. But when I said close to six million, that was combining them together. Is that, what is that other pot? Paul, you want to go ahead and explain the other? I can tell you this, there are about 45 schools and it's not because Fairview just received about $10 million in, in improvements over the past five years. So when you look at life cycles, the Fairview's share of the pot is probably about two, two and a half percent of the overall pot. What about Oak Ridge? Oak Ridge uh, is probably just a little bit less than that, about two percent. It's the elementary schools, it's it's not based on per rider per on student stations in the school, but it has to do more with the age and condition of the air conditioning systems and the needs, the capital needs of the school. Okay. And just one other question. What what is the other pot that you're talking about? Paul, you want to go ahead and explain the QZAB or QSKIB? The Qualified Zone Academy bonus uh, was an opportunity uh, through the uh, administration, President Obama uh, stimulus package that we could borrow money at 0% interest. And we took advantage of that to the tune of about $33 million in Leon County, over 10 schools. And Fairview's share was a little over $3.6 million. $3 million uh, money that this district borrowed at zero percent interest, which has to be paid back, and the half penny, the new half penny will be part of part of that is debt service. But we'll, we'll be paying that back. Okay. And but fair of you had these schools that we did with those dollars were schools that we felt like at that time still had the greatest needs, even though we had completed what we said we'd do in the previous half penny. We wanted to make sure that we took care of other needs that were identified too, because of the drop of that half a mil, you know, that was where we lost that $55 million over the years. And, you know, Curtis was part of that at the legislature, but he fought for us, you know, each year when this was going on and he was, our local delegation was really good about that. But the problem is, it's just like when this referendum comes up, you got some people that will make up their mind to vote a certain way, regardless of how much information we all lay out. So that's why it's so important that we get our people, our parents to show up and for this because it, it's, not an, it's not an easy time to pass these. If you look around the state, uh, there's been some successes and there's been some failures. And uh, we've tried to do everything that we saw in the ones that were successful, transparent, getting the information out there, showing everybody where the dollars would go and making sure that we took care of all the previous needs that were promised to that community. Good questions, though. Others, right here. Hi. Um, is, am I correct in understanding that this is a 15-year half percent sales tax? The last one was 10 years. What's the rationale from going from 10 to 15? A straight, honest answer is that it really makes no difference in passing it, whether you do it, research has shown us 10 or 15. So I said, let's just go ahead and do 15 and, and go for the max and, and try to get it all at one time rather than going 10 and turn around and come back to another 10. So when we looked around and talked to people that had passed it, a lot of those had gone for 15 and there, there was not any difference in passing or failing it because you know you've got those needs projected out. So let's just go ahead and lay it out and try to get it you know, while we can. That was pretty much the rationale on it. Uh, last time when we did it, uh, you know, it was with a, the economy was in a little better shape than it is right now. And after I, one thing I've learned from this, you can't always bet on the economy. You know, I, I'm a believer the economy will come back and I really believe that things are starting to turn around now even better than before. 
but you go through these times when you get a big dip, and then when they've cut the millage back where you've lost $55 million, I just felt like let's just go ahead for a 15-year period, try to get it. So that's pretty much the rationale. And our school board felt the same way. So all of these signs and, and projections are for the 15 years. Yeah, all the money's budgeted, so we didn't go out there and try to say, but what we did do, we were very conservative in our collections. You know, we didn't try to say we're going to collect $30 million a year. We went with what we've done during this time period, and these have not been real high collections because of the economy. So if the economy turns around, there could be additional dollars, but we know we can take care of everything that we've got up on the signs, and we also put in the capital dollars that we would have budgeted in, so every dollar that we have has been budgeted back in and what you're talking about is a great question because that was the difficult piece that this committee had to do is to budget out for 15 years when you know how things change and in and, and, and technology we've got some latitude because there's going to be different things in technology tomorrow than 15 years from now but it's, it was a great question and that's what we did it and we felt like by budgeting it was very transparent for everybody to see good questions and people are going to ask you these questions, so that's why it's good to ask them now. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and be around a little bit. I do have a candidates forum that I have to go to at Westminster tonight. Curtis has been there before and knows what that's like. And I've got to go there right when I leave here because if I don't show up, people think you're not there for them. So I've got to do that. So, and what I've been doing is, is scheduling these community conversations. I've had to miss quite a few candidate forums, and I've tried to pick and choose. But tonight I'm going to do this one. That's why I appreciate you all coming together. And I'm going to run over to Westminster. And, and we've got, I think, community conversations scheduled throughout the month. And anything we can do, uh, I, I think they've got a Facebook page that's going up re related to the half penny. Uh, I, I should have looked at it before I came over here. You know, join us on Facebook, anything you need. Uh, Mr. Bird's going to stay around a while. Barbara Wills has helped. Scotty has helped. So we've got a whole team working on this. And, and again, talk to your principals. And anything you can do for this, I certainly appreciate it. And I want to thank you for what you've done for our school system during these tough times. Uh, it seems like that it was only uh, six years ago when I was first elected, you know, and these six years have gone by pretty quick. And... I do appreciate what each and every one of you are doing as parents, as students, and as teachers uh, for our students for their support. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to make a quick comment. Um, I'm here with my, my uh, elementary school daughter. She go, attends Oak Ridge, and I also have a 13-year-old at Fairview. Um, this is uh, my first meeting. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, I'm glad that you've been elected as superintendent. I attended Rickers High School, and uh, I was there during your reign. <laughs> so you know all the stories. Oh, I know. I was there and practicing everything. So uh, I just wanted you to know that uh, I didn't vote for you because I knew who you were. I voted for you because of your tenacity on the court. I see that in your uh, superintendent role, and it's very powerful, and it moves people to make things happen, and I appreciate that, as well as uh, teachers that uh, attend uh, Oak uh, Ridge and uh, certainly at Fairview. I see Ms. Collier Brown over there. My daughter talks about her all the time. <laughs> so, um, Thank I you just, for that. That, that. You know what? During these times, believe it or not, that that Curtis can tell you that that's what gives us strength. Because I will tell you that these these have been tough times, and it's been a tough time to lead. And it's been a tough time to teach. You know, it's been a tough time for all of us. <laughs> And the only way we've gotten through this is by being, you know, together and working together and just, you know, I, I mean, if you look at what our teachers, they've had one raise, I think, in five years, and it was small, and, and we put some dollars aside this year to do something. And it's just, you, you know, it's frustrating to me, you know, seeing what the state's done. And I've I watched the legislature and our local delegation just yell and scream and refuse to vote for budgets. But... I really believe that it'll turn around again. You know, it's going to turn around again because the most powerful group of people in the state of Florida are parents that have their children in public schools that depend on this for a better way of life for their children than maybe even they've had. And uh, when you give up and, and you don't support public education, eventually it's going to come back and it's going to find you. And I think it's going to happen in this next governor's race. I really do. And I think we're going to have a strong message that's going to be sent out through this state 
that public education is important to Republicans, Democrats, and independents. Mm -hmm. It's nonpartisan, mm -hmm. and we all expect it to be funded. And, and so, but, but your words mean a lot to me, and I really, really appreciate it. And again, thank you all for being here. I'm going to hang around a while, and thank you for what you're doing in our schools. Thank you very much. <laughs>